With apologies to the musically inclined here, I can't sing, but then neither could Bob Dylan. Well, they'll stone you when you're trying to be so good. They'll stone you just like they said they would. They'll stone you when you're trying to go home. And they'll stone you when you're lit all alone. Well, I would not feel so all alone. Everybody must get stoned. Bob Dylan, 1968, singing about marijuana. 1968 was a record year for the record companies, putting out songs about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was a record year for the bureaucrats. They had three wars going. A war in Vietnam, a war on poverty, and a war on drugs. They were losing them all, and the budgets just kept getting bigger. It was a great year for the counterculture. They were blowing things up in Europe and the United States and selling a lot of drugs to simple-minded young people. It was a bad year for the average man. The average man, taxpayer, was sending his son to Vietnam. His daughter was dropping out and thinking that sex was the same as love, which it wasn't. And he himself was paying for it. Taxes went up. I can tell you about it. I was there. I lived in San Francisco in the Haight-Ashbury district in 1968. It was not what they made it out to be. They tell you that marijuana is a wonderful experience. I can tell you what marijuana is. It makes you a little silly. Ha 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 ha. You laugh. It makes you hungry. You eat a lot of food. It makes you sleepy. And if you smoke it all the time, it makes you drop out and not care about anything. Not particularly good. Speed, amphetamines, make you hyper intense. If you're studying for a test, you take speed and you can study all night and read that thing. And you arrive at the test the next morning and you're ready to go. And you take that first question and say, yes, I can do that. And you spend the entire hour on question number one because you're so highly focused. And you forget the rest of the test. Not a good idea. LSD takes you to another planet. Everything looks different. Turkish friend Farid said, Ooh, les couleurs. He spoke French. Everything is distorted and different. But it's not better. It's not a place for you to spend your time. The costs were immense. I had two cousins, Julie and Liz, about 10 years younger than me. They came to the San Francisco scene about the time I lived there. They had five children by five different men, never married. Two of the children are even dead. They're dead in 10 years. Just ruined their lives. Joel Beck, a very promising cartoonist, 40 years dead now. My friends Lee Cauldron and Jerry Gregg lived to be almost 70 and didn't do anything with their lives. Lee was a diplomat, but never had a family, never did anything. And my friends Ed Kenny and Jerry, uh, Ed Kenny and Denny Krentz, whom I've mentioned, watched it all, and we see it happen to our kids, but it didn't happen to us. Drugs have been a disaster. Now, Western Europe is trying to say, drugs, no problem. See, they're legal now. No problem. No. What happened is that they decided that locking people up didn't solve the problem. Drugs are still just as dangerous as ever, more dangerous. But locking people up didn't prevent people from using it, created a lack of respect for the law, it was a waste of time. That's what's changed. So drugs became legal in the United States bit by bit, state by state, 
the federal level, they're still totally illegal, but individual states say, we won't prosecute you, and it's a state problem. So drug use is becoming more widespread in the United States. In Holland, they legalized drugs 30 or 40 years ago. You can go to a coffee house in Amsterdam and light up, nobody will bother you. Portugal made everything legal 10 years ago or more, and it hasn't been a catastrophe for Portugal. So not prosecuting drugs doesn't make them good, but it means fewer people in jail. So that's really where we, where we come out on drugs. Now, you and the former Soviet Union had the advantage that you were under the protection, if that's what you call it, of the Soviet Union until 30 years ago. So drugs never made inroads here. If I were speaking to a room full of people your age in America, most of them would have tried drugs. You have not. Please keep it that way. Those drugs in the United States don't do anything good. In the United States, people are dropping out. You can read about the social problems in the United States and Western Europe. You don't want them. So, what I, and if you want to, the sum of drugs, what happened, take a look at what happened to the popular singers. When I was a kid, the singers were Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Perry Como, the Andrews Sisters. They all lived, lived long and productive lives, had kids. They were happy. The iconic singers of the drug age, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain, are dead. Take that as a take-home lesson. So when Bob Dylan says, everybody must, get stoned. No, everybody must not get stoned. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. Madam Toastmaster.